Now, before I start the details of this video, I just want to say, above all, all my thoughts and prayers are with the people of the Ukraine who are suffering terribly at this time. My thoughts, too, are also with the families of the soldiers killed on both sides of the conflict. Now, first and foremost, what I think we need to learn about what's happening in the Ukraine is that as an investor, you need to be diversified as much as possible, whether you're investing in shares, real estate. And I think when I talk about diversification, it's also a good idea to have different types of investments. So as I say, you could be invested in real estate, shares and gold. And gold, it's a good time to be in gold because the price of gold obviously has gone up a lot because of uncertain times. But share wise, you could be invested, let's say, in commodities as well. So commodities um, have been going up quite a bit and they've offset um, other losses in your portfolio. So diversification for me is the main thing. Now, also, what is very worrying um, and what we're learning from this conflict is that our freedoms around the world are being eroded by governments. And it's not just, for example, I live in the West and a lot of people here are talking about Facebook being taken down in Russia, a lot of independent media outlets being taken down. But we also have to take into consideration that even here in the West, if we look at the channel RT, a Russian TV um, station that's also been taken down both in Europe and I say Western Europe and in the US so our freedoms are being eroded and this leads me on to my next point where I think it's a good idea if you can get for example another passport or another couple of passports or let's say um, other residencies whether you need to flee the country you're in because of political turmoil or whether you need to go to another country because your freedoms are being eroded. Now, I must admit on my channel, I don't cover um, other passports or other residencies in detail. I have done videos on the Portuguese Golden Visa and the D7 Visa in Portugal. And I think though, as a result of what's happened in the Ukraine, I will cover this um, in more detail going forward. Perhaps I will talk about other residencies and other visas. Also, I think what's very important we need to learn is that you need to look at the political climate in any country that you are investing in. So um, whether it's the UK, or U UK, Western Europe, Russia, Ukraine, wherever you're looking at or Asia, um, you need to look at the political climate because you could lose your shirt. And that's what's happened to many people who have invested all their money, for example, let's say in Russian shares. Or I know somebody who has invested in property in Kiev, has invested a lot of his portfolio in Kiev, believing that um, it was a sure fire bet with high yields, low prices. But we've seen what's happened. So it's very important to look at the political climate and not only, for example, um, in the sense that you could lose um, your all your um, portfolio, whether it's shares or, let's say, property, but also from a taxation perspective. So we're seeing a lot um, in, in Western countries where there's ever more um, a tax being made on wealth. And I'm not talking about billionaires here or multimillionaires. I'm talking about even um, middle investors who've worked very hard and built themselves up a portfolio. We're seeing um, very high inheritance tax in countries, let's say like the UK and France. We're seeing taxation going up. We're seeing wealth taxes, for example, in France and in Spain. And you need to be aware of this um, when you are investing or, or for example, what residency or what um, you choose to be in or what country you choose to live in. These are all very, very important things that you need to take into account. I also want to talk about um, risk rewards as well. So um, 
I do cover um, real estate in countries which a lot of people say, why are you even covering those countries? So, for example, in Italy, um, I do cover a lot about real estate in Italy because although it's not a it's not a spectacular investment, it's not an investment you're going to do well in the future. And a lot of the time it's a lifestyle purchase as well. But um, it's much less risky to invest in a country like Italy than it is in Moldova, for example, where I did a video on Moldova a couple of weeks ago. And I do believe um, property prices in Moldova will go up a lot more in the next 10 to 15 years than they'll go up in Italy. But correspondingly, in Moldova, there is more risk. So, um, as I've said, Moldova, for example, you've got a breakaway republic called Transnistria, and you never know what might happen. So as I did state in that video, if it's your first investment abroad in real estate, I don't recommend Moldova because although the rewards are potentially high, so are the risks. And it's a place where a more seasoned investor will go who perhaps has a portfolio of investments um, abroad already. So I think risk reward is very important to take into consideration. And finally, um, a lot of people um, may ask, um, what should you do in this situation? Well, as I've said before, um, the main thing is to diversify as much as you can. Um, as I've stated before, perhaps have a portfolio of real estate, shares, um, shares in commodities which offset losses in other shares, and for example, gold, perhaps even some cryptocurrency. Although I don't personally recommend cryptocurrency, perhaps it could be good for diversification purposes as well. So be very, very diversified. Bear in mind too that I think what's going to happen here um, as a result of the conflict in the Ukraine is that inflation will shoot up even more. We've seen inflation go up a lot. It will shoot up even more. So um, if you can, and you're about to buy a property um, or you're about to remortgage in whatever country you are, go for a very long term fixed rate to offset what's going to happen because um, undoubtedly interest rates are going to go up. We've seen interest rates in Russia go up to 20 percent, which is enormous. But who knows? This can happen even in countries like um, the UK and, and, and the EU interest rates might well go up. I think they actually will go up a lot in the future. So please do try and fix your mortgage for as long as possible and look at shares that offset high inflation. Um, and that's all really you can do. But I would love actually to know um, this from your perspective. How are you going to act um, investment wise as a result of what's happening in the Ukraine. I also want to know um, from any of you if you've um, been affected by this both personally and investment wise. So perhaps you may have invested quite heavily in Russian stocks and seen very heavy losses or as as I was saying the person what somebody I know has invested in property in Kiev and obviously potentially could lose all of that investment. Um, I would love to know um, what's been happening on your portfolios and how you are going to um, react to this. I think from my part, as I said, I think um, diversification, I, I think that's the biggest thing to know, diversification. And, you know, if I know a lot of you will not have the means to do this is um, please do get other passports, other residencies. It may actually um, help save um, you from conflict either in the country or from your freedoms being eroded. Remember, the world is still a big place. There are other places to go and live where um, these problems are not so prevalent. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, and I'll see you very soon on the next video.